Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on Electronics 201, we're going to be talking about flip-flops. No, not the shoe, the digital electronic component. Now, flip-flops are a digital electronic component, as I just said, that toggles, or flip-flops, their output based upon their input. Uh, today we're going to be talking about three kinds of flip-flops, so and some of their general applications. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the first kind, an SR flip-flop. Uh, the SR standing for set, reset. So the SR flip-flop comes in two varieties. You've got the NOR and you've got the NAND. Those referring to the gates that make up the actual flip-flop. And I can show you it, the uh, SR flip-flop if you see a schematic for it, it looks something like this. You've got an AND gate, and these are oversimplified gates. You've got an AND gate or a NOR gate, and then you've got another NAND gate or a NOR gate. They have to be the same. And then you've got the two outputs. Uh, Flip-flops have two outputs, one an inversion of the other, so you've got Q and not Q, and then you've got set and reset. And then the outputs are connected to opposing gate inputs, like so. Now, they don't differ solely in their gate, in the gates that make up the flip-flop. They, they vary in their, um, their truth tables. So, S, R, Q. I'm not going to put the not Q in because I'm sure you can figure out what not Q is from Q. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. One, one. So when S and R are both zero in a NOR type flip flop, it just holds the value. When S is true, the output Q is one. When resets true, the output zero. And when they're both true, this is a value that's not allowed. And we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. The truth table for the NAND gate, S, R, Q. Bring this down a bit. There we go. Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one is the exact opposite because it's held to be that these are actually general inversions of the NOR flip flop. It's not S and not R. So the output here is hold. This is zero, uh, not zero. This is one. This is zero. And this is the value that is not allowed. Now, the reason I say it's not allowed is because of something called propagation delay. You have to remember that with all electronics, even digital, it takes time for signal to go from input to output, and that's what the propagation delay is. It's the time it takes for the input to go through the gate and switch into the output. And even gates that are from the same batch have different propagation delays. And the time it takes that for S and R to reach the proper levels of voltage and current to switch the gates aren't going to be the same. So what you end up getting is this random output. It could go into some crazy oscillation. It might not do anything at all. It's random, and it's that's the reason it's not allowed. You shouldn't use it. So avoid those not allowed values. Uh, the SR flip-flop is also a non-clocked flip-flop, meaning it doesn't require a clock line, and I bring this up because the next two flip-flops we're going to be talking about are, in fact, the clock flip-flops. Uh, final thing, the symbol for both. Most flip-flops look the same. You've generally just got a box that looks like this. That's the NOR, and here's the NAND with the inversions labeled. Three, four, and that's it. So that's the SR flip flop. This is the most basic kind of flip flop. It's just uh, two gates and no clock, nice and simple. The next kind of flip flop we're going to be talking about is the D type flip flop. 
the D standing for delay or data. I'll talk about why that is in the applications. The D-type flip-flop, the D-type flip-flop is, like I mentioned in the previous one, a clocked flip-flop. So the symbol is going to look something like this. You've got D, you've got Q, you've got not Q, not Q, it's all in a box, and then you've got the clock line. This little indentation in the side means clock. And the clock works something like this. If D is true, and then a clock pulse occurs, Q becomes true, and not Q obviously becomes false. Uh, if D is false, through a clock pulse, Q becomes zero, and not Q obviously becomes one. This is the clock. The clock. So you can think of this clock pulse here as a um, right pulse. There we go. It's a right pulse. Transferring the data from D to Q. And that is that delay. Remember in the SR type flip-flop, if I put a value onto S, it's immediately transferred into Q. In this case, the data, in order for it to transfer to the output, has to wait for this clock pulse, and it makes it a delay. Um, the data comes from the fact that this makes really good one bit storage. It's very easy to store one bit of data. Move my microphone there. Makes it really easy to store one bit of data. And that's it. So you can chain these together to make eight bits, uh, several bytes. This is the basis of storage. You can make a flip flop storage. Um, if you combine that delay and data, you can make something called a shift register. Uh, shift registers, what they do is they take serial data and convert it into parallel data. And it works something like this. You've got a series of D-type flip-flops. I'm going to try and be smart here. And copy. several of these that works like that. I don't like that work better than I would have thought. And then you tie all the clock lines together and then you tie the Q's to the D's and then you get something that looks like this. Uh, data bit 3, data bit 2, data bit 1, data, bit 0. And here's your data in, and here's your clock. So what you can do is if you shift in data, every time you send a clock pulse, it's going to push that bit of data further down the line. So it'll show up in D3, then it'll push it down to D2, then it'll push it down to D1, then it'll push it down to D0. So like I said, you can take serial data with a clock pulse and turn it into parallel data. You can shift it all out. Or you can use this to perform uh, binary shifting operations. If you have some data in, you can shift that a certain number of bits. It's a little more complicated, but you can do it. And so that's the that's one of the applications of a uh, D type flip flop. And so we move on to the last kind of flip flop, a J K flip flop. And to my knowledge, J K doesn't actually stand for anything. It's just JK. Uh, the symbol, we're going to go by anything, looks like this J, K, Q, not Q, and then the clock. And this is another form of clocked. Don't want to keep putting the hyphen there. Clocked. Flip. Flop. 
And you can sort of think about the JK flip-flop as a D-type flip-flop with an extra data inline as sort of an inversion. So you can actually take, let's see if I can do this copy and paste trick again, copy, paste, you can take a JK line, you can take a JK flip-flop, and then tie J to K through an inverter, and that just becomes D. And obviously the clock line still stays the clock line. Pretty simple. Uh, the JK flip-flop is sort of the the archetype of the flip-flop. It's something that really shows the toggling feature really well. Because it works something like this. You've got, if we were to look at the truth table, J, K, and Q. Yeah, I fill this in. Zero, zero is hold state. Uh, J, that becomes zero. Uh, these are all with clock pulses, mind you. This is, um, I guess I'll put this in here. Clock. Don't know why I'm combining my L's and my K's clock. Pulse. Uh, this becomes zero. And then this becomes toggle. So if I hold J and K together, and I just keep sending a clock pulse, it's going to toggle Q on and off and obviously not cue on and off. And it's that toggle that you can use to create something called a ripple counter, which is basically just a form of binary counter. So if I take that JK flip-flop, which I have saved here, you know, I'm actually going to redraw this slightly better. I said slightly, and I put in those. And then I try and copy this two, three. Yeah, three's good. I can deal with three bits of data, and I tie all of the data lines together like so, and then I tie the output to the clocks. And then this just becomes byte 0, byte 1, and byte 2. And obviously this is just its own clock. And this is just um, voltage logic level high. There we go. So what happens is every time there's a clock pulse with these two tied together, it flips it. And this chain of flipping changes by a power of two every time you move. So this requires two clock pulses to get back up to high. This one's going to require four clock pulses of this to get back up to high. It's only going to take two clock pulses of this one. And this is going to take eight clock pulses of this, two from here and two from here, to get to switch this high. And so you can see that creates a binary counter. And so that is it for these three kinds of flip-flops, the JK, the D-type, and the SR. So I'm Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.